In this video, I will show you how to reuse your player character setup to create an enemy that will chase and attack your player using a very basic AI logic. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. In my project, I have a character that I can move using my arrow keys on my keyboard and I can swing my sword using the uh, button on my mouse. I can aim using my mouse pointer and I can attack those white boxes that represent currently the enemies. I should explain how to create this setup in my previous videos. The link will be in the description. Now I want to add an enemy to my game so that it can attack my player and can move and basically perform an attack the same way that our player does. The idea is that we, since we already have the player that is already preset to perform an attack and move, why don't we reuse this setup to create a basic enemy? Well, my player is using a rigid body to perform the movement, it has a collider, but the culprit of the problem is the player script. So let me open it up and show you what is the problem here. Now in my project my player script controls the animations, the agent mover, so rigid body and the weapon. But the problem is that it gets directly the input from the mouse and keyboard using the new input system, so using the input action reference. I get this input and save it to my pointer input and movement input and I also have some attack action when it is performed, I'm calling the perform attack method. Now the scripts for this project will be on the github, the link will be in the description so you can verify every script that I have here. Now the problem is that since I'm getting the player input here in this player script, I can't really reuse it to control my enemy. At the same time player is controlling animations, the rigid body and the weapon, so I cannot go around without this player script on my game object. So before I can create my enemy, I need to extract this input connected logic to the input of the mouse and keyboard from the player script and I would convert this player script to more generic agent script that controls the agent's animations, agent's movement and the weapon of the agent. When we have a separate script that gets the input from the mouse and keyboard, we can use the Unity events, for example, to send this input to our player script, so the future agent script, so it does not get the input directly, it receives it from another script. This we will create in this first part of this tutorial. When we have this, we can simply remove our player input from our player, we can create an enemy out of this and drag onto it the enemy AI script that we will create in the second part of this tutorial and this way this is using exactly the same Unity events we can assign again our player script, the future agent script to receive the information not from the keyboard and mouse so from our player input but rather from the enemy AI script thus we can create our enemy that will chase and attack the player Okay, so now you know the plan behind this tutorial. Let's start with step one, which is extracting the player input from the player script so that we can refactor it to the more general agent script. You can download the starter project if you are my patron or YouTube member. Links are in the description. So first of all, let's go to the scripts folder and we need to have a new script that will handle getting the input from the player. So right click, create a new c -sharp script let me call it player input and let me open it up. Great. Now I will delete the start and update methods and as I have already mentioned, I will want to use Unity events to send the input from our player input which gets the input to our player script, the future agent script. So create public Unity event vector2 on movement input on pointer input. Now we need to right click on this Unity event, quick action, and to use it we need to be using the library unityengine.events. So those two events will send the movement input, so from our arrow keys and the pointer input, so the position of our mouse, and the uh, Unity event on attack, which will invoke the attack behavior. Great. So now if we save the script and go back to Unity, if we select our player and drag on it our player input, we are going to see that we have those Unity events and we can select, select this plus icon and add here an object and call on it a method. So now all movement input will send this vector to input 
to whoever is listening to this event. This way we can easily transfer information between one script and another. So this is our mechanic to transfer the information about the input to our player script. Now before we can do that, we need to first open our player script, so I will open mine. Great. Here I'm getting the input from the new input system using the input action references, so I have defined movement, attack and pointer position. So first of all I need to cut this out of the player script and I will need to select my player input and paste those here. And now if I go back to my player script everything connected to my input will have the red squiggly line so I know exactly what needs to be deleted or modified. So first of all let's go to the update and in the update you are probably getting some input from the pointer and for the movement of your character. So. I can select those two lines, Ctrl K, Ctrl C to comment those, and I can see that I'm getting the movement input here. Using this movement.action read values vector2 and I'm normalizing it. So I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to go to my player input script. Here I need to first select this input action references and I need to import the unity engine.input system library to be able to use this. And now I need to create another update script because this is where I want to read my input, so I'm going to call on movement input. This is the unity event. To call it, I'm going to add a question mark dot, and I uh, will call invoke. And here I'm going to paste the code that I have used to read the input in my player script. Now this question mark dot invoke is just for safety. If there nothing is listening to this event, usually there is a null exception. It is best to call question mark dot invoke to avoid any issues with this. So basically, now our uh, player input will send every frame this new input received from our input system using this on movement input event. So all we need to do is select our player and assign it to be listening to this event. But before we can do that, we need to go back and finish implementing our player input. So we can see that pointer input was received by calling this get in pointer input method. So let me find this. Now it is only getting the value and converting it using camera main screen to world point and returning it. So let me select this method. I can control X to cut it and I can go to my player input script and paste it here. And basically I need to do the same that I did in the update with the on movement input. I'll call on pointer input question mark dot invoke and I will simply call my get pointer input method that converts my mouse position to the world space point. Great. Now last thing that I have in my player input is this attack. Now in using the new input system we are using this on enable and on disable so I will select those to control x to cut those from the player script and I will paste those in my player input script. Uh, again I'm explaining this in my previous video about the new input system. Now I have no perform attack method here, so I will right click here, quick actions and generate this as the method. This should be at the bottom. So the private void perform attack method should be created. It is taking some context from our input action. All we need to do here is call our third unit event. So on attack, again, question mark dot invoke. Uh, this is just good practice, uh, how to call events. And this is basically it for our player input script. So let's save this, let's go back to our player script just to check if we haven't missed anything, but nothing is under underlined in red squiggly line. This means that everything was transferred, so let's save it, let's go back to Unity. Okay, great. So we have already assigned our player input to our player, so step one is completed. All we need to do is assign our input references. In my case I will select this and I can see that first one was the movement, so I will select the player input movement. Attack was the attack and the pointer position was the pointer position defined in my control of the new input system. Great, so now we can go to the step two which is uh, modifying our player script to actually be able to listen to those events emitted from the player input script so that our player script can receive the input and also we need to rename the player to be more general agent script. So let me reopen the player script and here beforehand I have been using this private vector to pointer input 
parameter and movement input parameter and I have sent them to those different components controlling animations, the movement and the weapon. So what I want to do to be able to assign those from the level of my player input, from the level of my Unity events, I need to right click on this quick action and I will select encapsulate field pointer input but still use field which creates for me the property which I can use to assign this value using the set method. I will do the same with the movement input quick action. I will select encapsulate field movement input and use property. This will create for me the same kind of property so that I can set it from outside of my player script. Now, one more thing that I have here is this perform attack method, which calls my weapon parent attack, but this is currently private. To be able to use it from the level of my events, I need to make it public. And we do not need now to get the context here, so all I need to do here is get an empty list of uh, parameters. Now let's save this script, but one more thing that I wanted to do is to rename this. So what we can do is right click on this, rename in Visual Studio, we should be able to rename it to be agent. And press enter, so this should automatically rename our player script. If it doesn't, let's save it, let's go back to Unity. Okay. For me, it did not uh, rename the script, so I'm going to select this F2 and call it agent because it needs to match the name of the class that is inside it. Let me press enter. And now Visual Studio is recompiling those scripts and let's select our player and we should have now instead of the player agent script. So now all we need to do is select the player input script and let's use this plus icon to add a reference here. I'm going to drag here the agent and I can select the function my agent and at the top for the movement input I can set the movement input property that we have created. I can do the same for the on pointer inputs, drag the agent and I still need to select no function agent and I have this pointer input. Last thing is the on attack I can select this plus icon, drag again the agent, select again the agent and I should have this perform attack and this is it. Now we have completed step two, so my player object is not dependent on the agent to get the input, it is dependent on the separate player input script. So now if I press play, I will see that I can do exactly the same what I did previously, and now it is using this separate way to get the player input. Now if you are finding this tutorial helpful, please leave a like, leave a comment, it would help me a lot. Thanks! So what we need to do now is select our player, let's for safety make it into a prefab, I have already a prefab uh, folder in my files, I will drag my player to, as a prefab, and now what I can do is co select this, Control D to duplicate this, in the scene view I can drag it a bit, and now we have a duplicate of our player, I can select it, F2, and rename it to be enemy, okay? All I need to do here is select my player input and simply remove this component and I will select my uh, sprite, sprite render and I will make it to be red so that I can indicate that this is enemy so that we do not have to swap all the animations right now for it. Great! Now what we can do is drag our enemy to the prefab folder, make it into a prefab variant so whatever changes do we do to the player they will be reflected in our enemy. Our enemy does not have now the player uh, input script so that now all we need to do is go to step 3 and create some script that will use an algorithm to direct the movement and the attacks of our enemy object. And that's what we are going to tackle in this part 2 of this tutorial. See you there!